Uh, welcome to another episode of Outer Sounds. We're here with Jeremiah Chu and Marta Sophia Honer, and we'll be talking about their new album, Recordings from the Island Islands, coming soon on the International Anthem Recording Company. It will be the March selection for the Outer Sounds uh, subscription. And we're happy to have them here today to chat about the album and whatever else. How are you guys doing? Great. Thanks so much for having us. Yes, doing super well. And just a quick uh, note that, I mean, it was something that we had learned so much, but uh, the little accent over the A makes it Oland. <laughs> Oland. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought... I it's wasn't sure the pronunciation, you know. <laughs> yeah, Olaf. we learned a lot uh, learn about how to mispronounce. Um, yeah, that was... but we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Um, yeah, so um, before we uh, dive into the record, which is which is just fantastic, by the way, I've been listening to it a lot, and um, it's just a beautiful record, and we'll we'll get into that. But um, wanted to just you guys, if you could just tell me about like your backgrounds, you know how you got started in music and just sort of how, how you've sort of ended up where you are today, you know, whatever, whatever you want to share and how much detail you want to share, but curious about that. Sure. I'm going to go ahead. Okay. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I grew up in a musical family. My mom runs a Suzuki violin school. So I started playing strings when I was really, really young, three or four years old is kind of when that training started um, and so I played within her program and was all kind of on the track to become a classical musician. Um, I went and I have a degree in real performance, um, during college and still do play classical music, chamber music, playing orchestras and whatnot. Um, but since moving to LA, I primarily do session work. So most of my okay. work um, is done recording, you know, on albums for different artists, doing, uh, you know, work for different TV shows and, and films and what and whatnot. Um, and then I also do some teaching on the side. I'm adjunct faculty now at Cal State LA Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess I I also grew up um, in Suzuki Land a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> playing uh, playing violin and piano, um, you know, from young age, but. And I think it took a little bit of a turn um, in high school when, you know, I, I decided that it would be cool to start a band and form bands. And then you know, it's the classic trajectory right. of suburban youth, right? Uh, <laughs> um, so learned the guitar and and then eventually, uh, you know, found myself in playing synthesizers because that was something that, uh, you know, I don't I don't really remember exactly that moment, but a lot of the um, kids that we were in school with were half into electronic music and half into like punk rock. And I think right. that that kind of blend continued forward uh, in a really, I think, wonderful way because it kept our ears pretty open. And so just continuing to play in bands and things like that um, in Chicago uh, eventually led to, you know, like a, a long um history or a long time spent with synthesizers so yeah i see behind you you have some modular gear i also have many that. years <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah it's currently currently unpatched but it's you know we're working yeah. towards another patch <laughs> <laughs> nice. but yeah you know basically eventually evolved into modular after collecting all sorts of uh you know, vintage since before they were expensive, yeah, <laughs> unattainable. Um, yep. and was playing in different bands in Chicago um, throughout the sort of like experimental electronic and, uh, you know, overlapping into like the jazz and indie, you know, band right. scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that's interesting. You guys, are you both from Chicago or just lived there for a bunch of years? I, I grew up in the outer suburbs of like the West suburbs, of Chicago, which one? Uh, Elmhurst. Okay, I grew up in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Oh, wow. you did! Wow. Yeah. So I lived in I lived in Chicago for a bunch of years myself. I went to DePaul University back in the nineties. We both did. <laughs> you did seriously? Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I was there from. I'm I'm probably a little bit older than you guys, but I was there from ninety four to ninety nine. So, and I studied music there. Um, 
yeah at the, at the school of music and uh likewise <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so I lived lived there for a bunch of years and grew up in the suburbs and, you know, was kind of, you know, in, you know, that was such a crazy time for music in Chicago, right? Like, yeah. you know, the mid to late 90s, you know, I saw like the explosion of like post-rock, Tortoise, Sea and Cake, Thrill Jockey, all that stuff, Jim O'Rourke, David Grubbs, they were all there at the time. So I got to be like, there during that all that happened but what i want to ask you is that you know it really feels like um there's been i mean chicago has always been a very musical town and with tons of music going on lots of cool stuff but there's definitely like this i don't know to me from an outsider now that i haven't been there for a while there's kind of this resurgence you know of kind of a, almost like a chicago scene and i think a lot of that is due to the international anthem label you know they've kind of become the hub and the, you know, the nexus of releasing all of this like great music that's coming out of Chicago and getting people to, you know, collaborate and play together. How has the, you know, how did the scene sort of like, how did you guys fit into it or not? And how, how did it kind of develop or has, have you seen it progress in Chicago before you moved to LA? Yeah. It might be worth mentioning how we, how we met. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so we actually <clears throat> met, uh, playing, the, uh, the, so Bitch and Bajas, which is a Chicago mainstay, uh, signed, they're on Greg City, right? Greg City, uh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so Rob Fry, who's in Bitch and Bajas, actually, we were classmates at DePaul, and they do an annual, uh, they do an annual performance with a bunch of different musicians of Terry Riley's NC. Okay. That they put on, and so we met during one of those, uh, performances. Yeah, so we were playing um, at Constellation, and I think that, like, you know, that group of people were just a lot of people that were part of the, you know, the community of people playing in Chicago that kind of overlapped, um, you know, jazz musicians, electronic musicians, you know, right. rock musicians, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that, I think, is really a huge part of the way that you know, I experienced Chicago music community and scenes is that there was, it's this very tight knit, uh, you know, group of people that are always playing in each other right. yeah. and are working with each other on different projects um, and are, and sometimes okay with, the, you know, just doing exactly that and, ne and never changing or, or never um, going beyond that. But it's always this really rich and uh, supportive community. So I think like, we had been playing, um, you know, I think like when we met, there was all of these moments of like, oh, you all, we all know the same people, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's always been a hallmark of the Chicago scene is like the cross pollination and people willing to, you know, do different collaborations or, you know, experimental musicians playing on pop records and rock records and vice versa and, you know, improvisers you know playing with different people so um it's cool that that's that's still active and you know there are a lot of musicians who were there back in the day who are still there but a lot of them have kind of like moved elsewhere as, as well but um so yeah that's cool and constellation is like a great hub of that of live music there you know obviously that's such a cool venue and they do they have great programming um so what prompted the move to LA and how you know how is how is the scene there and you know how is it different than Chicago how are you guys kind of navigating there I think that you know both of us we you know growing up I grew up in Chicago Marta grew up in, in Madison but then went to you know school at DePaul and so um I, I actually studied graphic design at DePaul and not okay. music. um <laughs> And, and work primarily as a, as a designer and educator. So, you know, there was this sort of moment in time where I think both of us were like, you know, it'd be interesting to try a different city or, you know, somebody that grew up there. I was like, if I, if I don't make this, if I don't try this now, it may, it may never happen. Right. Yeah, it yeah. might be there for all of time, which you know could be totally fun and fine as well. Um, but it just seemed like an opportune moment where there was, uh, there was an opera, you know, uh, we could move to a different city and still maintain some semblance of like uh, a living and make yeah. and work. And, you know, we 
were looking at other cities as well, but Los Angeles just seemed like a place where there was still a lot of connection to all the, you know, Chicagoans that had moved there, et cetera. And there was also just like an opportunity, I think, for, um, you know, the way that Marta was looking to, to work in recording and session and session work that opened up a lot. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think it kind of ticked the boxes for me. My priorities were moving somewhere where there was more access to the outdoors and having that yeah. be like a, a faster, you know, connection to get to, which is a little tricky. In, in Chicago, Chicago, you have to drive uh, so long to get out of the city. <laughs> right. so it's kind of like having access to that and yeah, having a place that had enough of, you know, a community and an industry that would be easy or easy enough to, you know, to freelance in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and just this, escaping the six months of winter oh, in Chicago. Is, yes, you and, know. and no more loadouts in the snow. That was exactly. also exactly. on the, on the um, list. But you know, the community here has really, I think, in LA is is really vibrant now. I feel like mm. I don't know how much of it was just me personally um, finding more and more connection with the artists here over time or it also um, proliferating a lot in, in the last you know, decade. But I think it seems to me uh, to be a combination of the two, just from speaking to people that are sort of lifelong Angelinos, et cetera, right. um, that there really has been a shift or a, um, an evolution of just like the way that the experimental and, and jazz and, and you know music scenes are happening here. Um, I know that like, uh the brooklyn club zebulon moved to la right. and yeah. they were doing such outstanding programming in brooklyn mm -hmm. uh, their move here i think also created sort of a hub where you know you'd start to see the same um community build around a space that you might see in chicago around like you know the hideout the bottle yeah. uh, constellation etc um so i think that really did help a lot but also just seeing like yeah, every every year there's a new wave depending on how harsh the winters are right uh, there's a new wave of of uh activity come to the city and it just it continues to grow and i think right now is a really special time to be here um there's amazing stuff happening everywhere so yeah i bet i bet um yeah that's great um so you know i want to talk about the album um that you guys are putting out um it has, it seems to have like a very kind of rich story and it's, you know, kind of, um, it's very specific to uh, a place, you know, and a time and everything. So um, why don't you like tell us the, you know, genesis of the project and kind of the story about how you did the residency and, and created the album and everything like that. Um, should I talk about Sage? Sure. <laughs> how it came to be? Yeah. Uh, Sage. Reed and her her mother Yannicka Reed they uh basically bought this like um <clears throat> 20 room hotel on this island in in the Olan Islands which is basically an archipelago of about 6,500 islands between Sweden and Finland okay. and Sage and I uh know each other just from Chicago I was I was um working out of this place called the shape shop which was like a collective recording studio and uh rehearsal yeah, space this is this is another connection actually oh, sorry cool. to interrupt no 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 um, this is great. <laughs> i went i went to DePaul with griffin rodriguez he was like oh. a good idea of mine uh, and really? i saw that you played in icy demons yeah. um and i was like oh my god this is like <laughs> this is crazy yeah that's the spot <laughs> you yeah know? Um, Griffin yeah. actually played on my senior jazz recital at DePaul. Oh, that's amazing. Bass, so he's such a sweetheart. And, you know, I knew a lot of those other guys that were, you know, around them yeah. in the band too. So, I mean, we'll jump around to that for yeah. sure. But that yeah. certainly taught me more. Being in Icy Demons taught me more about playing yeah. music than anything. Uh, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Really through yeah, that, that community of people like Griffin. So it was a special place and also connected to, yeah, like Jeff and Jeff Parker and, and right. that scene too through that. So, um, but yeah, anyways. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Sage, Sage lived in the uh, apartment above Shape Shop. So basically I, you know, become friends with her. And then at a certain point we were living apart, but then would meet up um, 
occasionally at this sort of retreat that we would go to in New Mexico. And one year she said, I'm trying to start this thing out there, don't know what it's going to be. And, uh, you know, me being somebody that's always like, let's make it happen. Yeah, you yeah. Know, try to put some energy forward and uh, basically, you know, talked to Marta and some friends. And I was like, what if we go to, you know, this is an opportunity to go to um, visit Scandinavia, right? Yeah, go to a place in the world that we had no idea existed until yeah. they invited us out. Yeah. And I have like a really, I'm not, the, I'm not good at vacationing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, oh, we're going somewhere. Let's find a project to do right. there. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we went out there um, and got, yeah, seven, it was seven of us that went out that first time yeah. on a trip that really didn't, you know, it wasn't intended to be a residency. It was more intended to be, let's help barn raise this uh, okay. hotel. Yeah, so we ended up most of the days actually just doing construction. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you know, painting rooms, plastering, all. You know, I spent a day, yeah, stripping a sauna. Yeah. Um, so we did we did a lot of that, but when Jeremiah and I traveled together, we we generally always bring some small like recording kit. Yeah. Um, and that I mean that's basically about it. Like a few clothes and then. A heavy backpack that's just filled with I know I'm uh, <laughs> microphones and, stuff. and all that kind of stuff yeah <laughs> so we did that's find moments there. so we we were doing you know we literally helping barn raise and you know having long discussions with Sage and Yannicka about what this could be um mm -hmm. and how to you know make it a, a place where people want to come and and could utilize as a retreat um and during that time when we were first there too it, it's it is the time in the year when the sun never sets Oh, okay. So we yeah, really yeah. had these long days and you just kind of get a, a, a surge of energy from it. I mean, one, it's always, always exciting to go to a new place, right? Yeah. And travel. And then on top of that, the sun never sets. So it's like, you're, you know, you're working during the day, helping out. And one thing I found really satisfying about that is, you know, compared to music, sometimes you can see the progress. It's like, it's very definitive. And that, right, right. you know, for me is like, just like really enjoyable um, versus sometimes, you know, a long day of practicing and being like, well, I kind of feel or hear something, but to really be like, all right, I painted this room. It's right, set, right. Ready it's to satisfying. Yeah. And yeah. then having the rest of it, basically, you could stay up as late as you want and, you know, go bike and walk and swim um, in, in like beautiful light that just like almost sets, but yeah. like never does. <laughs> like dusk, dusk falls. For, like, dusk, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's 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 super inspiring, and so we did find moments, um, you know, where we you know started to record kind of based on the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there there were all these things, you know, as we were traveling around as well, where and I I have like a tendency to do this too, which is like you come into a we went to visit a church, uh, you know, like this beautiful 14th century church, which we actually then uh, did some recordings in, um, or like a small house, etc., and you sort of see. You know, like this house has an organ that church yeah. has a, you know an organ this has a piano etc and just um asking it's like can i play this you know yeah. <laughs> nobody's here yeah and the microphone the, in there and yeah. exactly and and so those kinds of things like it's such a small place like that island that we were staying on is, is home to like 250 people and like 400 sheep you know oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's like pretty remote um and and rural and i think that like you know, going there and it was, there was like a high school boy that was basically his summer job was to like, if visitors come through the church, you know, you open the door and let them visit <laughs> and just keep an eye. And he was so sweet. And that first time I remember going there and I was like, Hey, is that, is that okay? If I tried the organ, you know, is it, uh, would that be fine? And he was like, well, I don't know you, but I trust you. <laughs> and so he let me play yeah, it. You know, I was like, this is a mile from where we're staying. And immediately if, the uh, next yeah. day, I went back there with like the field recorder. Yeah. And, the kit, and I was like, hey, about that organ, can I you know, record <laughs> it again? again. Yeah. So I sat there. And that's kind of what started this a little bit is just finding a couple of these things where it's like nobody's around and we have all this time and space and the sun isn't setting. And, you know, because of that sort of, I think, um, 
lack of, uh, you know, we were sort of deprived of like all the things that happen a big in a big city, right? right we're just right. it's calm, it's serene, it's beautiful, and like stuff starts to come out. So we started to just embrace that opportunity to say like if we're working on you know painting a room all day then maybe we play some music uh you know at other parts of the day or just find these moments where mm -hmm. it's like here's an empty pool that we've been painting around all day go grab your instrument let's go in this pool and record yeah. a little bit and see what happens you know so yeah that's uh archipelago now right <clears throat> yeah that, yeah is, there's is a from, track from recording in the yeah. bottom of the empty pool yeah so we basically come back after that first trip and started to cobble together some of these recordings and actually spent a week um, with John McIntyre when okay. he was up in, uh, you know, up Nevada City. Yeah, in Nevada yeah, City yeah. and try to like pull some of these recordings together and finalize them. Um, eventually they did, like some stuff did happen, but it became clear that uh, we were still looking to record some more stuff and got right you know a grant in 2019 to then go back and like perform a concert at that church so oh, okay that that kind of spearheaded us um formalizing even more music and going there and being like all right let's like make a record now from what right. we started here yeah uh, yeah but it was still kind of bits and pieces like very slow moving <clears throat> to finally finalize it. And I think until Scotty was like, hey, do you guys have anything? Right. <laughs> Share the demos. <laughs> and, and he said he was interested. And then it was like, okay, this is go time. We got to really yeah. Know, yeah. finally finalize this. Yeah. And I think the other thing that happened, like our good friend, Sean Pecknold, uh, who was traveling with us in the group um, is just like a constant uh, voice memo recorder like mm -hmm. very subtle yeah subtle like you never know and he's just capturing he's a filmmaker right yeah so, like he's always capturing these bits of audio um and so you know as this process went on and and scotty asked us to start to edit through some of the pieces because some of them were pretty well yeah. formed others were very loose and uh that narrative started to come together you know i'd ask sean for some of the voice memos and then just yeah, going, like that oh. Yeah, they they became a lot of the tracks. So it was this, yeah. you know, this uh, collection really of of recordings that happened all across the islands as we were kind of yeah. there traversing through. And then the process of uh, finalizing them here in LA was less uh, of like, all right, we did a demo and did a song. And it's like, no, oh, this weird recording has a feeling. It has a mm -hmm. yeah, for sure quality to it. So let's go from there and just work with what we have. So yeah. I feel like also then kind of knowing international anthem and its its output in a way helped guide it along with getting all those recordings from Sean because and we've talked to Scott about this to me like one of the biggest tying threads in all of the artists is they do do a lot of kind of like collaged right material. yeah yeah and it's all in its own individual way but I would right. kind of say that's like a defining feature um, so thinking about that as a little bit of a center point. And then of course, like big influences that we have like Battiato and whatnot helped right. kind of. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say that, you know, the the sort of collage and compositional aspects of the album are really cool the way there's lots of layers and there's also this, you, you can definitely pick up on the vibe of the, you know, the location and the recordings. And there's also like, you know, like you said, the, there's like the casual like voice voices right. and recordings too. And it's like that one, there's like one little part. I was actually listening to it today. It was like, I think it's you, Jeremiah. You're like, hey, what movie do you want to watch tonight? You know, or something oh, like yeah, yeah. that's in there. And it's just like cool, like, you know, kind of almost like every day. Right. Yeah, that one is, you can yeah. tell it was like a lived, you know, lived experience and that you guys collaged together right. this music from that, that space and time, you know, and um, it really comes across like in the in the record, I think. <clears throat> yeah, that, that piece actually was our friend Sage Price who was there. Uh, okay. And like uh, that recording is so interesting because it really is exactly that that <laughs> thing. Like we had all just arrived at at an Airbnb and I walked in and I was like, there's a piano there. We're all settling in. We had just been oh, traveling yeah. a bunch. And basically like I had sat down at that piano and just started to like noodle on it 
while people were unpacking and then yeah. sean was basically laying on the floor next to the piano and just started to any press record yeah. and so you hear Pretty sage usual, yeah. yeah you yeah. hear sage and march uh uh and i think andy and uh, was there and like he was unpacking and the two of you were like looking through like the dvd collection <laughs> and like that's oh, okay. what they're talking about you know so there's this yeah, moment great. of like it is that space we i was playing and noodling while they were talking and we're just all kind of like settling into a space so yeah 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 i was gonna the other thing i was gonna say too is that um you know i liked marta's point about collage being kind of a aspect of a lot of the releases on um international anthem the one that comes to mind the recent one that i've album that i love is the ben lamar gay his new record is fantastic yeah. and he has a lot of different kind of collage elements but I would say like, you know, there, there hasn't been a lot of like more of what, you know, we would, we would describe as like ambient music or something like that, or even electronic, like purely electronic music on the label. So I think your, your album, you know, kind of has, it has a niche, even though it's like, it, it works, you know, it fits in with the, the aesthetic of the label too. Um, some of the things, obviously the kind of classic, like, things that come to mind are like, you know, you know, ambient series, Harold Budd, um, but even more so I think about like Michael Stearns and Steve Roach and other kind of classic ambient stuff. Um, and then, like you said, uh, Italian minimalism, you know, that's like, I, I could hear that in there too. And um, what are some of the kind of like your favorite you know, music or what, what are some of the inspiration sources for, for either this project or your just music in general? Do you want to start? I know it's always a tough one to answer. For this record um, and I feel like kind of in general for the sound that we are still talking about for the duo, because I think this record is not necessarily the sound of this is not necessarily what's going to continue to happen because it was right. we had like ended up kind of having a like specific set of parameters almost for it mm -hmm. uh, but uh john hassel for sure um yeah, which I think is like a also kind of a great other reference for something that you know electro and acoustic stuff happening mm -hmm. yeah. um and it's something i kind of listen to when i'm thinking about how my sound is going to you know, be incorporated with all the synth stuff. Yeah, um, David Berman. Yeah, David Berman. Yeah, sure. right. On the other ocean. Exactly. Yeah. The record is phenomenal. It's yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've yeah, I think he does some amazing work uh, that we were particularly interested in. There's a record of his called Unforeseen Events. Yeah. And there's just this relationship of the acoustic uh, instrument playing the electronic. Right. You know, counterpart or like the computer or whatever through uh either sen sensory or uh microphone input etc mm -hmm. and for sure as somebody that's like in the realm of of like synthesis and have played synthesizers for so long now so much of the approach today is to see like how can you bring in something that feels a little bit more organic into right. that environment um and push the sort of like clock right so yeah. that it's less uh yeah, right, right. Yeah, um, mechanical and much more. And it has a much more human feeling to it. Right. So, um, other things. I mean, if if I was to, say, if you were to ask Marta what what uh, video I've seen the most <laughs> <laughs> or watched the most, she would say. The, YMO live yeah. at the Greek theater. YMO, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. YMO live at the Greek. I love theater. those guys. Yeah. Yeah. 1971 or something. I don't know. Um, but, you know, we, it, it's all of this stuff. Like, I, mm -hmm. yeah, we listen to a lot of different music. I, I, you know, also do a show on Dub Lab that is focused a little bit more on long form, uh, experimental, not necessarily ambient but um of course it tethers into that just through durational music right um but yeah experimental electronic stuff i think like raymond scott was a huge influence for me of course like all mm -hmm. this stuff sounds super great always <laughs> yeah uh, you know suzanne chiani um you know all of these sort of like 
synth uh, people, Aphex Twin, <laughs> listen to a lot, yeah. Sakamoto, uh, you know, all that. But then also you grew up listening to a ton of jazz, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, classical. And so there is this overlap that yeah. you always bring to my attention where I'm like, you know, have you heard this Oscar Peterson tune? And, and March will be like, that one's okay, but this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. This yeah. one's the one to go with. Yeah. You know, you grew up listening to Matheny. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Great. Why not? Yeah, ECM. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say the, um, there is like on this album, you guys have a very good, it, the acoustic and electronic is very integrated. And it seems like one, one way that, you know, people can, make that really happen instead of just having like an acoustic instrument kind of like layered over the top of like an electronic bed. Mm -hmm. It sounds like at least on this album, what I'm hearing is the, the viola and string parts might be a little processed or layered or, you know, just treated in the mix in a certain way that, that makes it mesh with the tones you're getting out of the synthesizer and some of the other instruments. Is that true or? or yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, obviously there's like the more acoustic lead lines that you'll hear and then yeah. took some of that and other stuff I did. And for a lot of it, it was run like through granular synthesis. And that's right. Kind of yeah. You have to have those snippets that kind of are maybe the middle ground right in between where they still mm -hmm. have like a little bit of the original quality, but start to blend with the synths more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's something that we talk about a lot Yeah. Uh, in terms of our backgrounds in, in like I didn't continue on as like a classical classically trained musician so I was much more in the realm of like improvisation and uh right. experimentation and then you have a much more formal classical training so uh, but in those environments like your playing is usually one-to-one -one, you know it's like here are the notes on the page mm -hmm. and we play the notes and I think my perspective is is almost the opposite it's like right. you know here are some notes but uh, let me determine many ways in which they can be played, right? Either through uh, through synthesis, through different ways that the triggering and the gates function uh, or overlap, but also then for you, when we were experimenting with like even live granular processing is to say like, I've, um, I've captured uh, a phrase, you know, maybe played on the viola, but then I'm going to spend time altering or replaying that phrase, uh, you know, as if it was a, a looped piece of tape mm -hmm. or a sectioned off uh, sample. And, and it gives you this like nuance of like the performance and the way that the notes come back mm -hmm. start to shift dramatically. So yeah, yeah. it's pretty interesting. Um, and we're, we're actually, if you, uh, watch our live band camp <laughs> on Sunday. We're oh, going to be doing- to plug that. Yeah, I've got to plug yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, we'll be I don't doing... know if I'll have this up by Sunday, but maybe yeah. it will. Yeah. No, 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 it's fine. Well, there's a bunch of actually shows coming up, but um, yeah. we are working now a lot on, I mean, behind us, we have, it's like this microphone that keeps jutting out of my head. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is uh it's not your ponytail. Is fed into the modular. Um, oh, so nice, so. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, what he's, basically what he said, we are working on doing live. So I will be playing some stuff and then in real time, he's capturing it. I don't know what module that is. A couple of different ones. A couple but, different, yeah. I don't know if you wanted to plug that too, but. Um, <laughs> Refresh, it's a good stuff for that. So, yeah, yeah so, so live capturing, you know, direct feed and then starting to manipulate that with, with loop and granular. And then that, yeah, as that builds was kind of fun rehearsing the other day as it's building and developing and, and he's kind of spinning that back out and that gives me another bed to play on right. top of and maybe yeah I hear a, a little rhythmic thing that happens that I want to play along with or I'm going to play you know a different harmony over it based on where it goes mm -hmm. so that's kind of fun yeah 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 that was that's actually gonna that was leading into what I was going to ask next is you know once the record comes out um is it in March, right? I can't remember. Yeah, the March 11th. Yeah. Um, you know, it sounds like you guys have plans to to play live and, and present this music live. Are you going to try to present like the music from the album or are you going to kind of create a new live set that's in the spirit of, of the record? 
a second. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's hard yeah. to recreate stuff on an album. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's some stuff that it's half and half right now. You know, there are certainly motifs and 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 sort of like themes that come that we use as a starting point from the record. But certainly, mm-hmm. like the the artifact of that record, the re- the way it was recorded and created and built is so it would be near impossible to you know pull it off yeah. um, the same way. But for sure, that I think it'll be interesting because it'll blend a little bit of like the things that we're working on now uh, with like the, you know, the sound of that record. So it won't be so distinct that it's a totally entirely different entity, but um, I think it'll actually uh, blossom in a really nice way. So from that record. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you planning a tour of any sort or? Right now, I think the, the word tour it may not be the no, right one uh, select yeah, dates yeah. and shows yeah. only because um i think like to get a, a one launched amidst you know <laughs> the, the way things have been schedules have been going um everyone from tw- the last two years are rebooking their tours now yeah, that's right. yeah. so to try to get a full full one done uh this year i think would be a little bit more challenging but we are playing a bunch of uh select dates nice that- ping pong all over the place and actually might find ourselves in vermont uh around august so okay well yeah you got to let me know about that for sure yeah Yeah, i'm trying to think which shows are already announced we have yeah public records yeah that just got uh, announced so in new york on the 19th yeah march 19th public records in new york uh, with alabaster to play (laughs) oh yeah i saw that yeah Yeah, that will be super special um yeah, some stuff in LA and then some stuff in Chicago. TBA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Chicago. That's good. You gotta, yeah. you gotta yeah. bring it home, you know. Um sure. cool. Well, I guess the the last thing I want to wrap up with is um uh what comes next after this record. You know, what you said you're you're already working on some new music and you know, how's that going and what kind of direction is that taking you? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, I think it's just like, yeah, we're starting to kind of <laughs> I think we're starting to explore as we're kind of building the live set what where we kind of want the sound to go because like mm-hmm. we mentioned before I don't think us collaborating together we were ever like the sound of you know the record that's coming out is our sound mm-hmm. I right. think there are elements of it absolutely that that work really well and I would like to continue but for sure because it had such specific parameters now we're getting to explore um you know what happens when we don't have those parameters yeah. necessarily um and i do think kind of building doing more of treatment of my instrument um to you know create different patterns that to me that often do kind of go that minimalism mm-hmm. route but still rhythm yeah are, are kind of cool yeah i mean i think um you know there's a lot of music happening right now mm-hmm. Uh, we're all collaborating a ton with different people as well. I know that like, I mean, Marta is like always playing, you know, a gig or on sessions. And mm-hmm. I do a lot of live show performance in LA where it's oftentimes like as a duo with different, you know, musicians, whether that be like recently, it was like Booker Stardrum, who's like a New York based drummer, mm-hmm. uh, percussionist um, and electronic musician, uh, Patrick Shiroshi out here, uh, oh, yeah. is one player um Celia Hollander I'm actually doing something with um at the end of the month so there's kind of like these overlaps of stuff and so like as we find our sound like one thing that we focused a lot on in preparation for these next um set of shows is is actually was was an idea that I uh heard follow listening to a, an interview with John Hassel which was uh that I didn't realize that he was like multi-track recording all of his live performances. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's so cool. Um, so I've spent, uh, you know, some time in the last month, basically figuring out how to bring the live rig out to do exactly that without it being an ordeal. <laughs> right. So we are basically, um, we'll be doing these shows and, and multi-track recording everything in so that we can catch those improvisations once again or those yeah. moments that things kind of hit mm-hmm. uh, but then be able to use that source material to develop the next uh you know next record so yeah that's a good plan yeah well that's great um i appreciate you guys talking to me today and um 
yeah, hopefully I'll see you out in Vermont when you come out this way or, or maybe somewhere else. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks so much again for doing all of this. We really appreciate it. We're yeah. stoked on the uh, series. It's, yeah. it's amazing. So. Yeah. I'm excited to, to get this record out, out to folks in March. I think, I think people are really going to dig it. So anyway, we'll keep in touch and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks sure. so much. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.